Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So if you haven't seen, they just released a World of Ice and Fire. You can buy it on Amazon. There's even a Kindle edition. So what it is, is like an ancient history of Westeros written by George R. Martin. This video is just going to be a cursory breakdown of what the chapters are and some of the stuff that you can find in the book. Just a quick reminder, I know you guys will like this. I'm giving away copies of the book. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is be a subscriber and leave a comment. I'll try and give one away for each bonus video that I do. Just because most of you probably haven't had time to read it yet, I'm not going to get into spoilers or really specific details from the book. I'm just going to pick out a few bits. For people that are really big fans of the books, this will tide you over until season 5 gets here. I mean, it is literally like a thousand pages long. I haven't gotten my hardback copy yet. I've actually been reading my Kindle copy. So right off the bat, it's written in third person, just like Dance of the Dragons. Like George R. R. Martin is writing it as a maester, recording history. Not so much recording history as recalling history, or trying to piece through history. The protagonist's name is Maester Yondal. Tommen's name is specifically mentioned in the preface. So you can think of Maester Yondal as living in present day, like he's alive right now where we are in the books. The history is all ancient history, like very ancient history. Long Night, Rise of Ancient Valyria, The First Men, The Dawn Age. All the things that we always wanted to talk about, but that the canon hadn't really gotten into yet. Technically, Old Nan's stories are canon because they're written by George R. R. Martin, but you get the idea. I really did like the maester voice that George R. R. Martin spoke with when he was writing Dance of the Dragons versus the first person POV style that he uses in the main novels. Just think of him as like an analog of Samwell. Like imagine what Samwell sounds like when he's speaking to himself in his own head. They did release an Aegon chapter for Aegon I that explained his history and his conquering of the Seven Kingdoms. So if you read that, then you kind of know how the rest of the book reads, at least the style that it reads. So we have one new character, two, the next big thing that he revealed about the book, George R. R. Martin, is that he left a lot of stuff out. What does that mean? Well, it means he probably just left out things that are critical to understanding what's going on in Winds of Winter in the future books. So in terms of seeing spoilers in the book for future things in the novels, do not worry. George R. R. Martin has you totally covered. He is not going to spoil his audience. That also brings up the issue of unreliable narration from some of the characters. Maester Yondal, the person who's narrating the book, acknowledges the difference between recorded history and actual history. Like during the Dawn Age, for instance, he talks a lot about the giants and the fact that nobody recorded any of their history for them. Like, they don't have their own recorded history, and at the time no one was recording history. So most of what they know is all conjecture. I just think it's George R. R. Martin winking at the audience saying, this might be true, it might not be true. Number three, big big battles, big big Game of Thrones. One of the things that Martin is really good at is getting into the real politic of history. Like if you're a student sitting in a history class reading a textbook, a little bit of the book reads like that. So you learn very specific names, very specific events. He does cover things through Duncan Egg, the Blood Raven, a lot of the things that we found in the other books and the expanded materials that just haven't really been talked about a lot. The events of the book take us up to where we are on the show right now. So it does deal a little bit with Robert's Rebellion. Not the spoilery parts though. No, you do not find out who Jon Snow's mother is. Like, Martin isn't going to spoil that. Number four, the gods and magic. Some of it's conjecture, some of it's known fact. The book does dispel a couple of myths. He addresses the issue of people thinking of heaven and hell like the god and the devil. It'll be really fun to revisit everything when season five starts, especially when he releases Winds of Winter 2. And no, he did not reveal when that's happening. And number five, all about dragons. The book really gets into the rise and fall of dragons. You could almost say it's like the rise and the fall of the Targaryen family. Although technically the Targaryens weren't a big household in the Valyrian Freehold. Although now that Daenerys is the mother of the dragons, she's largely brought them back into the world. So it is interesting to think that the fate of dragons is tied to the fate of the Targaryen family. Number six, the world is getting bigger. So for anyone who is like a big fan of the book of maps that they released a long time ago, he explains the rise of all the kingdoms, like all the big cities, all the big places, like the free cities for instance, he explains how they became the free cities. There's a whole chapter on the creation and rise of Bravos, as well as a number of other cities. Number seven, complete family trees. So he has complete family trees for the Targaryens, the Starks, and the Lannisters. Pretty much the three most popular houses in the show. If you've seen, there's some really awesome pictures that really get into it. It gets really, really complicated. The books really only address a fraction of these family trees. But now World of Ice and Fire just puts it all in front of your face. Number eight, the Reign of Kings. Starting with Aegon the Conqueror, he has a timeline of every king to sit on the Iron Throne, to Tommen. Number nine, beautiful illustrations. So here's just a few of the many, many just mind-blowing illustrations that are in the book.
like I said, this is a really long book, so there's a ton of time to read it. The videos that I'm going to be doing for it won't necessarily be super spoilery, but I will get into more specific things just based on stuff that you guys really want to talk about. What I'll probably do is just break into little bits and just start chronologically work my way through. If you have any specific things that you'd really like to talk about out of the book, just let me know. I'll be sure to add it to my list. So in case you haven't seen it, they're making a whole bunch of changes in season five. I do a breakdown right here. You can learn all about them and you can click here to learn all about the flashbacks that we're going to be getting. That's right. They're going to be doing a few flashbacks. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five and I'll see you guys tonight.